is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here for part two of the tutorial video series with Hermit Style, uh, Jimmy Bacon. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel already, get over to the channel, smush that subscription button, watch their side of the video also. But we are doing deck number two. So if you're unfamiliar with what's going on in the series, we're doing a three deck play. We're each playing three different level decks with each other, and then we're giving away those decks and the people that win the giveaways, and then you get to play each other on our channels. Uh, but I don't want to bore you guys with too much information. If you like this video and you like this stuff, smush that subscription button, hit a ding dong bell and the like, whatever, all that good stuff. Make sure to check out the Hermit Style channel as well. There will be a link in the description below. And uh, there it was. I hope you enjoy this video and uh, learn something about the level two. We're going to be getting into unisons here. All right. So I always like to shuffle like this. I don't, did you shuffle yet? I think I saw you shuffling. Oh, I'll shuffle again. We'll get this. Brian. I learned this. I I learned this shuffle maneuver from John Carlo. Shout out to John Carlo if you're watching this. I call this the John Carlo special. It's five stacks like this shuffled up. This is how you draw for ready to rumble. It's now doesn't flip. <laughs> um, <laughs> at the beginning of the game, uh, you get to draw six cards. You can send any number of those cards back for what's called a mulligan. After your mulligan, you draw your hand back to six cards, and then you put your life in your life area, and then you start the game. So in the last game, we did a dice roll. See who goes first. And I won the dice roll. And this is basically best of three as we're playing three different level decks. So, well, not really. But um, for this one, I think Jimmy should go first. Maybe we'll just roll dice for the third one again. It's kind of sure. like not really best of three. But for this one, Jimmy will go first because I went first for the last one. And in this game, generally, the turn player or the player that goes first is at an advantage. So I'll go ahead and not be as advantaged in this game. And in theory, also won't have four ready to rumbles in my hand. <laughs> uh, so once you shuffle, you offer your opponent a chance to cut your deck. I like that we use the exact same sleeves on. I know. All these. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, all right. So then you draw six cards and see how nasty you are. If you can grab exactly six, then you're super nasty at this game. And then you'll choose any number of cards. So I'm just going to show my opening hand here. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a unison. Unison is super important to awaken now that we have them in the deck. So I definitely want to have a unison. I also really like this card. This card's really good. And I think I only have one in my deck. So I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just send everything else back in hopes that one of the cards that I draw is going to be a unison. The more cards I send back, the more likely it is that I will get a unison in my hand. And if I don't have a unison on my third turn, I can play this card that will draw me a card and give me another opportunity to see a unison if I need to. Yep. And so, I'm also sending five back, just keeping one for the same reason. <clears throat> yep. Just looking for unisons because the unisons let us awaken. So whoever awakens first is going to really get a lot more momentum than the other player. And it's going to make a big difference in who gains the speed needed to win the dragon ball super card game and then we're going to put our life in our life area so it's eight life total i like to do four and four just so i can see when i'm at four life easily identify that and jimmy is going to go first so i'm going to say gambateo <laughs> good luck all right here we go here we go good luck to you too um all right so more. we're going to start and charge my favorite boy so i get to look at him all game long and um, that's the right attitude yes sir and remember as going first we cannot attack we can we don't get to draw um you just have your hand to play and then you pass i only have one card i can play so i will tap one and you know what we're starting it off just like the last time baby playing that shoe Yo. <laughs> oh, show. and i will pass turn back to you all right so now since i am the not the turn player, but the second player. What'd you call it? The draw? Player on the draw? Player on the draw, yeah. All right, so I get to draw at the beginning of my charge phase, and every single turn will draw at the beginning of our turn, and then I'm going to choose something in my hand and put it in my energy area. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this oob because I know that it's Jimmy's favorite card, and that's going to uh, flex on him for the entirety of the game. It's okay. It, and makes, then, me, it makes me feel <laughs> good inside. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, I'm going to attack with my leader to his leader, Auto pending. Any negates? I will say no negates. For my auto, I will draw a card and I will say no combos, just 10,000 to 10,000. And as like last time, we take those. We take those. And then I'm going to pay one energy and play Napa. 
nice to mess with his shoe and then i know that when jimmy awakens he goes down to six life so there is no point in me attacking with this card i also give him another target to attack so i'm just gonna pass turn after playing that card yep all right so start the turn i will draw one card untap my energy and then i get to choose one to charge which we will go ahead and charge a piccolo another skillless you'll notice this time you'll probably see us charging um probably more skillless cards that you would expect us to play because now we've remember upgraded our decks a little bit to cards that do more things um so yep oh uh, let's see here so i luckily did draw my unison so here we go tapping to playing down ss kaba spirit resonance so this is the first unison that we've seen you'll notice that in the top you'll see an x here um, that x means you can actually pay any number of energy you would like to play it so long as you meet the cost so if you remember from our last video next to the cost you'll see those little red dots um, or in joku's case blue dots whatever color you see there that is how many energy you must at least pay um, so there's two red dots on Kaba. That means I must pay at least two red energy. But if I want it, I could pay 10. I could pay three, I could pay four. It's up to you when you play a unison. And however much energy you use, that's how many markers it will get. So I will put a die on my unison so I remember how many markers it has. So I tap two and I put two markers on my unison in play. Um, does that make sense? Did I explain yes, that right? Uh, yeah, I think so. And just as a side note, the markers on the unison operate somewhat like life points on your leader. So the markers are directly connected to the unison, and the unison doesn't get knocked out of play until its markers are reduced to zero, the same way that the game is over when your life points are reduced to zero. So <clears throat> unisons can manipulate the number of markers on them, and while you have a unison in play, oftentimes it'll benefit other things in the game, so it's beneficial to have a unison. Uh, while you have a unison in play, the unison is normally going to be the target to attack over the leader and because of that a lot of decks have created uh, a lot of leaders now have skills where when you play unison it gives you a window to awaken yep exactly so i'm gonna go through everything my unison does and then we'll talk about that alternate awaken condition and you will probably see it this turn um so auto limit one so this is the first time a lot of firsts here <laughs> uh, limit one means that i can only even if i no matter what i can only activate that one time for the turn and that is it um it limits you so that way you cannot do this multiple times um when this card is placed in your drop area from your unison area choose up to one of your mono red leader cards and it gets plus 5,000 power for the turn so if this were to go to my drop i can activate that auto with a limit one and buff up my leader and then it has ways to add and remove markers on it so you'll see on the left side of your unison cards some of them will have a plus some of them will have a minus my first one is a plus one and it's an activate main so an activate main means i can do that anytime during my turn while i'm not in battle and you'll know it's activate main you'll see the orange border around that now the activate main says choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards or unison cards and it gets neg 10,000 power for the turn so i can minus 10,000 to any battle card i would like on his side of the board lucky for me his battle card is only 10,000 um <laughs> and then i have a neg six with an auto that says if your opponent's life is at three or more when your mono red saiyan leader card is attacked deal one damage to your opponent so that is a very powerful effect if he attacks me, I can actually activate this auto during his turn, take away six markers, and then he takes a damage, but I have to have at least six markers to remove. If I don't, I cannot activate that ability. Um, anything you want to add about markers or unisons there? I think it's really nice that you have Vegeta and his pupil, Kaba, and you're about to murder <laughs> Nappa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did not even think about it like that. That is perfect. <laughs> I, you, you, some people may have thought this was a small brain play by me, but this is actually the best play that I could have possibly made. <laughs> this, uh, this amazing interaction. That's every, hilarious. Every opportunity Vegeta takes to kill Nappa, he will. And in this instance, he's even getting his people to do it. So. <laughs> Pretty cool. 
All right. So my leader's awaken says when I'm at when my life is at four or less, or I have a red unison card with a specified cost of two. Specified cost means those two little red dots we've been talking about, which Kaba does meet that. Uh, you may switch out to two of your energy to active mode and add cards from your life to your hand until you have five life left. And then secondly, choose it to one of your red unison cards with Kaba in its name and add a marker to it and flip this card over. Um, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> so we will awaken. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. We'll untap two energy and we will add a marker to Kaba. So Kaba goes up to three and I now have my two energy back to be used. Um, so now at this point, I'm going to actually plus one and we'll go ahead and pop that... Uh, Pop that Nappa, neg it by 10. Vegeta! <laughs> All right. So now on my leader's backside, we didn't go into this last game, but now that I have a unison, we're going to talk more about this too. So his auto is when this card attacks, draw one card, then choose it to one of your red unison cards with a specified cost um, of two and no keyword skills, and it gains double strike for the turn. Um, auto once per turn, I can spirit boost one. Uh, this is the last new skill we'll talk about this turn. Um, Spirit Boost 1 means I can activate the cost to activate this skill as I take a marker off of my unison. So Spirit Boost 1 means I would remove one marker. If it said Spirit Boost 2, I would remove two markers. Uh, now for this, it says when your opponent attacks your red unison card with a specified cost of 2, negate the attack, then choose it to one of your unison cards and it gets plus 6,000 power for the turn. So I neg one marker, but it can help keep my unison alive for that turn if you were to going to attack it multiple times. So this is one where you're going to have to make sure it's it makes sense to play it. If I know he's only going to swing one or two, like, you know, one time into my unison, it doesn't really make sense to activate that if I don't want to. Um, so you have to make sure you plan when you want to do it. Luckily, it's only Spirit Boost 1, so it doesn't matter too much. You don't have to get too big brain with it. Um, but yeah, that I think covers all those keyword skills. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and get to work. I'm going to attack your leader with my leader and auto pending. I will say no negates. All right, so I will draw one card. And now that I've drawn my card, I will give my unison the double strike for the turn, and I will leave my leader at 15,000. So I will take that hit. Now, we haven't talked about double strike. So double strike is keyword skill. That means if the card deals damage to a leader or a unison, it will deal either two life damage or knock two markers off the unison. So now I'm at the threat of losing two life from one hit instead of just one, as we've seen for the whole game so far. Yep. Now, in this case, I have to make a decision. I could decide to be hyper aggressive here and really start pushing his life down, or I can wait and make sure I play a little bit more of the hand advantage game. Um, I do have the ability to be more aggressive here, and he is only going to two energy, which I know in him playing Soul Striker, his unison play is a three drop, so he still would not be able to awaken this next turn. Um, so it is actually more of a tough decision to make here. I can give him the two cards and potentially set up for a really big turn next turn, or I can just kind of hang out, wait, and really start to push the next turn. So this is one where you need to start adding up cards in hand. So how many cards do you have in your hand now? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm already down to five. If I swing and he takes it, he goes up to nine. He's now plus four on oh, me. Oh, one other thing. Uh, sorry, when you awaken, you take your life down to six. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, you are right. And actually, I think it is... Um... Actually, it's down to five. So I apologize. Oh, five. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's my fault. But yeah, when you awaken, you do take that life and go down to five. Um, Given this is the only time you've ever played that leader with the unison, I think it's excusable. <laughs> <laughs> my, my apologies. My apologies. Um, okay. So. That changes things. It does change things because now we're more yeah. even. We're at seven. And I actually have a really big power play I could set up for next turn. So you know what? We're going to play a little ballsy. We're going to attack his leader. Yep, and I'm going to say no negates again. And I will say no combo, 15 double. 
And now I'm going to have to minus two cards in my hand if I want to get out of that. And I don't think that's worth it since our hands are about equal right now. So I will take that hit into my hand. Yep. And then I am going to tap one and play Intensifying Power Trunks. Ooh, nasty. Yep. And um, I'm actually just going to leave him in active mode because we have a big play. We're going to talk about him more next turn. I'm going to go ahead and actually pass turn over to you. All right. So I'm going to draw for my turn. Untap everything. Choose a card in my hand and put it in my energy area. And I'm going to go ahead and charge this Tapion because it's so pretty. And I just want to look at it all game. And then I'm going to go ahead and attack his unison with my unit with my leader auto pending. Yep. So with my leader skill, um, once per turn, I can spirit boost one, negate the attack, and then he gets plus 6k for the turn. Since I feel like whatever he does, he's going to keep pressuring my unison. We're definitely going to do that here. I'm going to take my unison down to three markers, activate that skill, and also give him that buff for the turn. And do you have any skills to resolve off your spirit boost? So for the spirit boost. Oh no, I mean like cards in your hand. Do you have the Oh no, 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 no. I don't I don't have any okay. cards in my hand. I was like, what did okay. I forget? <laughs> Alright. So no no, you're good. Uh, uh there is a card in the Vegeta deck that when you use a spirit boost skill, you can play it. So I was just yes. making sure he was since we're since we're explaining so many things, it can be easy to forget triggers that happen, so being uh you know jimmy's friend right, very also. very I goku sure love you. He's, he's getting he's getting all the opportunities <laughs> uh my auto is i draw a card for the attack and um i'm actually going to leave it at 10 i was hoping that he would spear boost because i don't have anything else to attack him with this turn and i want him wanted it to lose that marker so my plan worked very well and i'm going to pass turn to you yep so i will untap one thing you have to remember when you are playing against Soul Striker is oftentimes there is a card they will use that lets them combo up to five, that lets them combo for 5,000. And then once it is in their drop area, they can tap two to draw two. So you'll see very commonly That's they will correct. combo off that card and tap two to draw. And because there's no real, uh, I guess there's, there's no real repercussion for that. If he were to then tap two and then attack with a unison card potentially my unison now goes down to two markers and he gets to draw two right uh, but right. you could definitely make a case either way yeah yeah absolutely if it makes you feel any better i'm not playing any sand instincts in this one they're in the next one <laughs> <laughs> you got me <laughs> all right talk to you all right, Go ahead. Have fun. All right so we are going to charge another I skill think, this year i think regardless though spirit boosting is the right decision in that instance because even yeah. if you don't all i do is have to combo one card and then i could play another card and swing at it and knock it down to one and that just puts you in a bad position so yep i think pretty much no matter what when you're playing vegeta and somebody swings into your unison you want to spirit boost immediately because it doesn't put it to 20 it puts it to 21 and 21 is a lot more annoying to deal with than 20 because you have to meet the attacking number remember most increments are in increments of five so now if you want to hit the unison you have to go over 20 which is a much greater investment than going to 20. yep agreed agreed all right so i have a lot of actually different play lines that i can take here um he's at five life so whenever your opponent is at five life and you have a potential double striker you can always put them from five to three the issue is i have to attack to give him double strike so no matter what he's going to be down to four if he decides to take that swing which i'm sure he would um that being said i do have this one drop shoe on board that's only at 10k so because i know i'm going to be pressuring this turn uh what makes most sense here is i want to try and get the most damage possible i really want to do as much as i can to try and even the score a bit and get us close if i don't attack with this shoe first all he becomes now is a combo piece, as you saw in the last game. Um, if I swing with him and he takes that life, this essentially was just a free damage I got off turning him sideways. Based off my hand and where I'm at, I feel like that gives me a lot more value. So that's the play line I'm going to take first here. I'm going to swing with my shoe, hoping that that will put him to four life. Um, so yeah, I'll declare the attack. I'm going to say no negates. Uh, and I will say no combo, just 10,000. And I will take that hit. There we go. Okay. So our plan works so far. So now he is down to four life. And now we can really start pressuring and pushing. Um, I feel like he's going to start defending if I start attacking. Um, 
I also don't know what cards he plays. There may be cards that could potentially remove this trunks. So now I have to make decisions. I have to say, do I want to attack with my leader, see if he combos out, potentially attack with my trunks and make that attack more powerful? Or do I just want to attack with this right away, make sure I get my swing and I get that card out of my life? Um, we're we're going to play for the highest value play here. So I'm going to swing with my leader and we're going to swing into his leader, declaring the attack pending my auto. And I'm going to say no negates. Okay, so my auto resolve, I draw one card. I will give my unison double strike and we will leave him at 15,000. So now that I'm in my battle step, this is the only time that I can awaken defensively. So since I'm at four life, I am going to go ahead and awaken, flip my leader over. I draw two cards. Now I'm at 15, so I only need 5,000 more in order to block out of this attack. So I am going to ditch another Nappa and combo 220, and he's going to go to my drop area, and I survive that attack. Sweet. Okay, so we got a card out of hand, and now how many cards in hand does that put you at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so that's 12 to my seven. So I know I really need to push here. I really need to try to make up for that spread. So I'm now going to, I know my unison has a double strike, so he's definitely very threatening right now, um, but I'm gonna save that attack. I wanna try and get some more cards out of his hand. So I'm gonna declare my attack with intensifying power trunks, who has an auto. No, I, um, no go ahead, well, I'll explain the auto after your negates. Yep. So I get a window to negate before his auto resolves, and I will use my favorite negate in the game, uh, Chance oh, to the Rescue. Oh, baby. <laughs> so this is kind of nasty here, actually. <laughs> uh, this is a counterattack. It negates the attack. Then my opponent may choose one of their cards in active mode. And now it doesn't specify battle or energy or a unison. It's just a card that is in active mode and switch it to rest mode. If they don't, then I get to add this card from my drop area back into my hand and I can't activate it for the remainder of the turn. So oh, man. Jimmy has to make a decision here. He can either choose one of his cards and rest it or I get Hercule back. And the majority of people that interact with this choose to not rest a card and they let me get Hercule back. And that's never sleep on Hercule because he's the one that actually saves her. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> So we're definitely in an interesting position here because of the spread between us. I'm trying my best to make up for that spread and him having that negate back to hand adds that one. However, in this case, there really isn't any card I wanna cough up here. I wanna be able to swing. I wanna have access to my energy. So sadly, I will not tap anything and allow him to add it back. Yosha! Um, comes back. That being said, my auto to go into pending, so now we'll talk about this auto yep. and whether or not it makes sense to use it. So it says, when this card attacks, you may choose one card in your life and add it to your hand. If you do so, this card gets plus 10,000 power and critical for the turn. So critical is a new ski as a new ski word, a new keyword. That, <laughs> <laughs> um, if the attack were to go through, instead of taking the life to his hand, it would actually go straight to his drop. So critical is a very powerful effect that would have helped me in trying to make up for the spread. Unfortunately, he had the negate. What's cool is I could still resolve this if I wanted to and take this card to my hand. Um, in this case, I'm not going to um, because I have other plays I wanna make and I wanna have actual access to this energy, but it is very interesting um, and it makes for different situations where you can choose, do I wanna take the life or do I not want to? Um, okay. Right. So we are going to make a fun play. Uh, we are going to tap two and we're going to evolve for the first time. So I'm going to evolve nice. my trunks into chain attack trunks. Uh, for those of you watching that have played this game a long time ago, this was a very highly played card way back in the day. Uh, I still love playing it. So I had the opportunity, had to, had to try and cram it in here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when in a card evolves, so Basically, the way this card reads, it says Evolve. It's a red skill, so you can see it's the red behind the Evolve. And it has two red dots. You ignore the cost up here, and you just go by the cost of the skill. So it says Evolve, and then two red dots. That means you just need to tap two red energy to Evolve a Trunks GT. So any Trunks GT that's on my board already, I can tap two red energy and place this one on top. 
So he goes from Trunks into the Super Saiyan Trunks, which in this game, this card is called Chain Attack. Uh, now, he does a couple fun things. He has a permanent that says this card can attack battle cards that are in active mode, so he can help me control the board. But also it says when you play this card, choose it to one battle card from your hand with power of 15,000 or less and play it. So I will resolve that auto playing a Digging Deep Vegeta. Now, Digging Deep Vegeta is a really cool card. It's a card I used to play a lot. It says auto once per turn. When this card attacks, you may choose up to two cards from your life and add them to your hand. If you chose to add one or more cards to your hand, switch this card to active mode and it gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. Um, so that's why I didn't want to take that life with Trunks. I wanted to be able to attack with my Digging Deep. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to attack Soul Striker. We're going to attack, declare attack on your leader. Uh, no negates. So my auto will go off. I will decide to take the one life. He will switch back to active mode and get plus 5,000 power um, for the duration of the turn. So he'll be a 20k single strike and I will stop there at 20. 20. How many cards do you have in hand? I only have six. So I have 12. And Jimmy is at four life. I'm at four life. Um, this is a kind of tricky situation because Soul Striker really, really wants to get to three energy because that's where I can start playing a lot more defensively and control this game. Uh, every one of these life really matters, and I know he has a double strike coming. Um, so it's likely that I'm going to have to take at least one of these, but to give him the idea that I'm going to be playing defensively, I'm going to go ahead and combo 10k to go to 25 and block that attack. Okay. All right. So now we're effectively finally trying to make up for the spread. We're building our board and we got two cards out of hand at exactly what we want it. And we're going to see what happens this time. We're going to attack again. And I'll say no negates. Okay. And remember that auto is once per turn. So once per turn means it's done. I can't do it again. I could not take another life and switch into active mode again. I wish I could, but I will leave him at 20k. All right. So I am actually going to live life on the ledge and Ooh, take that hit into okay. my hand. Yeah. All right. So... We would have preferred, obviously, two cards out of hand, but regardless, we've now progressed game state and we're pushing him into a more lethal range, which is also pretty cool. Um, that said, I feel like when I'm playing this matchup, I'm a bit on the clock, um, especially with these versions of the decks. If it gets too late in the game, blue is just going to steamroll me. I have to do as much pressure as I can early. Uh, so at yeah. this point, we're going to move forward and declare the attack. But keep in mind, it would not always make sense to do this because I know I can't kill him. It would put him to one life, but that hand advantage at that point may not even matter. He could probably steamroll me the rest of the game and just hang out at one um, with all the defensive options yeah. he has. So we're going to attack. I am going to activate Wiss's Coercion, Negate. Yep. And when I negate with this, it negates the attack. I get to choose one of my energy and switch it to active mode. Perfect. So he negated the attack. We got another card out of hand. So this turn we are effectively got three cards out of his hand and we gave him one. So not too bad of a turn. Unfortunately, he still has a big advantage over us. But now that I have my board, we'll see if we can keep some of it. And next turn, really try to close that gap. Uh, but yeah, that's all I can do. So I will pass turn back to you. All right, let's get in there like swimwear. What are we going to do here? Ay, 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 ay. I don't think I'm going to be playing oobs this game. So, oob, you're going in the energy, buddy. <laughs> um, before I attack with anything, I'm going to want to play my unison. So I'm going to play Captain Insane. Oh, he had. Oh, man, that's rough. That's, we that's don't. We did not want to see a dual attacker Super here. Warrior Evolution. Yeah, this is this is my guy. So. He comes in with three markers, and he does a bunch of stuff. I'm going to read all the stuff that he does so that Jimmy doesn't walk into my trap, um, just to remind him how nasty Captain Insano is. So, <laughs> Captain Insano is a dual attacker, which means that he attacks once, he stands back up, and then he attacks again. And if the card skills are negated during the attack, he's still going to stand back up because dual attack goes into pending. So even if his skills get removed, he will still stand up if he's attacked. 
He has a permanent that says if your leader card is a blue sand, which it is, and you have a blue sand card in play in rest mode, your leader does not take damage from attacks. He then has an activate main minus one. Choose one, up to two of your opponent's battle cards. Return them to their owner's hand. Then choose one mono blue sand card with an original cost of two or less in your hand and play it with skills negated for the turn. So what I want to ask here is ask Jimmy, how many markers do you have on your unison? Uh, I have three. Oh, did you plus your unison last turn? I completely forgot. <laughs> you should plus it. Just for, just for like, sure, we're sure. explaining tons of things, so it's really easy to forget the little things that we're doing. But you always want to activate your unison skill. And reason, probably one of the reasons why Jimmy forgot is because he was explaining 10 different cards and simultaneously <laughs> I didn't have anything on my board for him to target. So it's not like he got any use out of targeting something. But that marker on his unison is going to be another marker that I have to deal with. Yep. So you always want to plus when you can, plus, no matter what. So now he's at four and I'm going to have to deal with those four markers. If I want to clear his unison this turn. And if I am a smart player, I'm going to want to clear his unison because I don't care about pushing and aggressing him this turn. I care more about dealing with his unison and then controlling the game state from this turn. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I know when I attack, he's going to negate the attack and make his unison stronger so i'm gonna get bait that negate out by attacking his unison with my leader yep and Auto we will do just that we'll spirit boost one go down to three and buff him up yep and when i attack i draw a card and i turn two of my energy and switch them to active mode and just because there are a lot of effects here just a reminder that happens because of my leader skill my leader has that skill that once per turn, I can spear boost one, which means remove a marker, negate the attack, and give him 6,000 power. Um, and then I am going to... Oh boy, let's see. What do I do here? Your unison has three markers and it's at 21k, right? Yep. Okay. So... I am going to, uh, heck, this is tricky, man. All right, uh, oh, heck, I'm going to pay one energy to spirit boost on my unison. Okay. Remove one marker from my unison, so he's going to go to two, and this card gets played for one energy. So instead of paying four energy for this card, I can activate main limit one, which means I can only do this once per turn. Boost one for one blue energy, which means I get to remove one marker from my unison and play this card for one energy instead of playing the four energy for this card. And then this card says, when this card is played, draw a card. So I draw a card. And then this card is a 20,000 double strike, which means it's going to hit two markers off his unison or two life off his leader when it attacks, similar to the unison that got the double strike from his leader. So I'm going to go ahead and attack his leader, his unison with Papion for 20,000. Yep. And sadly, no negates. So since he has no negates, I am going to combo. I'm going to combo another Tapion to go to 25 since his unison is at 21 to knock two markers off of his unison. Yep, and it will do just that. Whenever someone attacks a unison during my turn, I cannot combo. You do not get, it's the only time that you do not get a defense step. So even if I wanted to combo out of that, you cannot. When it, someone attacks a unison, that's it. Their markers just go if they have met or exceeded your power. Um, and here I am going, I have another attack here. So I'm going to attack his unison with my unison for the first attack uh, and ask if he has any negates. Yep. No negates. So I am going to combo another 5,000 to go to 25 so that I could knock another marker off his unison and kill his unison. Yep. And my now unison that, is dead. That spirit boost just got two more cards out of my hand so that was a very useful use of one marker removal to pressure my hand because now i have one two three four five six seven eight cards and how many cards do you have uh one two three four five six six okay so i still am somewhat advantaged here and um, with kaba oh. uh what's cool is it says when this card is placed in your drop area from your unison area, choose up to one of your mono red leader cards and it gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. So I'll activate that auto limit one yep. and buff my leader. 
yep, so your leader's now at 20K, so I have to combo up more if I want to deal with him. But the card that I really don't want to deal with is Digging Deep Vegeta. That card is really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with my SS3 Gogeta at his Digging Deep Vegeta. Since it's in rest mode, I can target it. And that's going to be 20,000 at your 15,000. Any negates? I will say no negates. And I am not going to combo. All right, so I'm in an interesting spot. If I save him, um, he can still neg one his unison and return him to my hand. Um, Correct. I could attempt a super combo where I don't lose any cards from hand and get him back. But regardless, I would still have to play him again and ultimately be at the same spot. Um, I think the only difference Correct. here is if I save him and he bounces two cards, I would still just at least have one battle card on the board. Whereas if he dies and then activates that effect, he has now effectively cleared my board. The thing is, all I would really be doing here is saving a shoe really don't care that much and i would like to save my super combos for when they're more meaningful so unfortunately digging right. deep dies and also if and when i did bounce cards i could just bounce just the uh trunks which is actually what i'm yep. going to do i'm going to minus one on my unison and go to one marker and send the trunks back to your hand so when the trunks get sent back to your hand then the card underneath the trunks goes to your drop area yep and that's going to be that attack. And then I, uh, wait, yeah, I swung twice with him. So now that I'm at three, I can pay one energy, activate main and play Sun Goku Calamity Challenger. Nice. Sun Goku Calamity Challenger is a one energy card. And when I play this card, I draw a card. He also has blocker and he's also a blue sand, which interacts with my unison, which I hope Jimmy walks into my trap, but he may be too smart <laughs> to do it. And at this point, I am going to pass turn. Okay, so that turn was really bad for us. <laughs> but we will see what we can do to try and come back here. Uh, we're going to charge the one drop skillless in my hand because realistically, all he has at this point is combo power. He serves no other purpose. And yeah, so now we need to decide, is it worth it to... We, well, we can do a couple things. We can try to reestablish our board um, or we can try to establish the unison. Um Based off where we're at, he knows my unison can be powerful. Um, what I need to be thinking about is how many cards are in his hand and how much defense does he really have? Uh, knowing- One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's at eight and I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm only down one, but he's tapped out. So I do have an opportunity here where if I can effectively make sure that that Goku goes to drop and doesn't stay in rest mode, I can really push him while he's at three life. So it's it's hard to say what the right move is it's, it's, here. A, it's a weird position this it is, is it is like a, a very a, weird position for sure it's, um, like a, it's like a defensive check <laughs> yeah yeah this is actually very tough so man i feel i feel like we gotta go if this game goes any longer and he gets to those four energy and those ready to rumbles come back <laughs> we're in for a bad bad time so um we're gonna play ballsy here we're gonna play ballsy we're gonna tap uh well you know what we're gonna start by swinging with leader into his leader uh, uh i have to block because this is a blue sand and once this is in rest mode my leader won't take damage because of my unison correct, correct. so that was definitely the right move because it's forcing that block on me now so yes i will block yep so now I have to decide what I want to do and here it makes sense to combo up because I need to make sure that Goku is gone so I can try and make the most out of this turn. Uh, so I'm going to use one of my super combos that I saved, draw a card, and we'll leave it at 25 and see what he does. I will let Goku die. He serves okay. his purpose. All right, so we're going to try our best here and get in there. I don't think it's going to work, but he's tapped out, so we got to try. <laughs> we're going to tap one and play Intensifying Power Trunks. Any response to playing Trunks? Nice. No response to Trunks. And what Jimmy means by when he says any response, you guys have seen how we have counter attacks. There's also counter plays. 
Once unisons are in play, you have access to free counterplays. My unison is at one marker. It needs to be at two for my counterplay, but I still may have a counterplay that counters the play of that card. Most of the blue counterplays send the card back to hand. There's some that put them at the bottom of the deck, but um, the, the counterplay is activated when the player plays the card. So I don't have any response to that card. So I'll say no counters. All right, perfect. And we are going to declare an attack with Trunks into your leader. When he declares the attack with Trunks, I am going to activate the gate. So I have Dimension Magic. If you guys watched the first video, I paid for Dimension Magic with my energy. In this video, I am going to take a life to pay for Dimension Magic's cost because I have five or more cards in my drop area, which is why I laid my drop area out like this. Now, when I activate Dimension Magic, I'm going to negate the attack and I choose two cards in my energy and switch them to active mode. Yep. All right. So we are going to tap two and we're doing it again. We're evolving chain attack trunks and we're going to play oh. the next digging deep. <laughs> digging. We are digging. <laughs> we're getting a little desperate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to declare an attack on your leader. So, of course, in this instance, I have to use the best negate in the game. Uh, Champ to the rescue. He's coming back. You can't sleep on Hercule, man. <laughs> you can't do it. He's too nasty. So now Jimmy has an option. He can either choose one of his cards, switch it to rest mode, or I will get Champ to the rescue back to my hand again for the next turn before his auto goes into resolution. Uh, knowing that he can't use it again this turn and knowing that I'm trying to push right now, I'm going to say that's fine. I'm going to save my combo piece and my energy and uh, we'll let it return to hand. I will resolve Digging Deep Vegeta's auto and I'm going to take two life and restand him. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and yeah. We're going to attack again with Digging Deep and the leader. All right. So this is a situation where I see Jimmy has one energy open. He has, I don't how many cards in hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Red has a card called Champa, uh, Furthering Destruction Champa. If he combos with that card, he is going to give that Vegeta double strike. The Vegeta is already at 20,000. So if I have a negate, I have to use it now because I want to avoid the possibility of getting Chompa, which will give that Vegeta double strike and knock my two life. If he has the Chompa, then he's going to use it on Shu, and I'd rather he use it on Shu because Shu has less power, base power. So I am going to use a Dimension Magic here, Yep. and I'm going to turn to energy back to active mode. Okay. And here we go, attacking with Shu to leader. No negates. All right. Sadly, I don't have Champa, but we've got a trick up our sleeve still. We're going to combo this up to, let's see, 15, 20, and 25. And that'll be all. 25. All right. So, uh, hmm. How many cards are in your drop area? I have four in drop. So there's four cards in the drop area. And I have a feeling that there's an Overrealm coming, which is a card that's played for less energy when he has cards in the drop area. You have four in drop and you just comboed four? I comboed three. Three. Okay. I'm pretty sure Scientist Foo is Overrealm seven with one energy. <laughs> so I think that Scientist Foo is coming. And Scientist Foo is double strike. So if I don't have any negates in hand, I'm better off taking this hit right now and going to one because the card that's coming is going to be a double strike anyway, if it is coming. And so I'm going to take this into my hand to give me more combo power or a possible negate. And you are very smart. I'm going to tap one <laughs> <laughs> and play Scientist Foo. So Scientist Foo nice. is over Realm 7. Uh, it's Remember, just like he said, the top left corner, it says 7 energy, but as you read the text, it says over realm seven over realm is always with the red behind it. And there's a one, that one with a circle, just like that one you would see next to your combo cost. If it costs one energy is just how much energy you need to play to activate that skill. Um, with over realm activating that skill means I can send my entire drop, even though this was exactly seven, say I had 10 cards and drop, I would still send them all to my warp warp is just another right. area 
that is not in play and also not in the drop. Um, think of it like yeah, a void. I generally keep my drop area upright and then to sh- signify my warp, I'll just turn it sideways. Yep, exactly. Some like people I just use did. a different area also, yeah. Yep, exactly. Uh, now, when he is played uh, using Overrealm, I get to draw two cards. So we're going to hope we draw some combo power here. <laughs> and we're also going <laughs> to hope he doesn't area. have another negate and we're going to attack his leader. Yep. Well, you know... I have this, but I can't use it, yep. so I'm going to say none again. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, now, he can probably combo out, but this was... The reason we went in this turn is because if the game went on any longer, he accrues too much advantage knowing this deck, so I yeah. had to do red, what I had to red do. Red has to... Yeah, red has to do this. All right, so here we go. We're going to super combo. Draw a card. We're going to combo, so we're at 25, 35, 40... 45 and 50 is as high as I can get. All right, let's see what we can do here. I can go to 25, 30. Is he a one for 10? Uh, these are both five Ks. Oh, is your is your leader so, boosted? Oh, no, 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 wait, 20, I'm at 25. 25. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah. 25, 30, 35, super combo, draw. Oh, I'm Oh mad. my God, you gotta be kidding combo, me. Draw, and, uh, activate battle. What? <laughs> oh my God, he drew into that? Oh no! The one up! The one up! Oh no! All right. So I just had a crazy, crazy, ridiculous thing happen oh. there. Basically, for for anybody that's watching, I had I was going to die. I was no no doubt <laughs> going to die. I had a super combo, and I played the super combo. With the super combo, I drew into another super combo. Now with this super combo, I drew into Gotenks Return of the Reaper of Justice. This is, I only play one card of this in the deck and it's a really, really cheeky move, but I guess this is just why I play it. When I play this card during battle, it has activate battle and it says unique, so it can only be one of them in your battle area. If your leader is a mono blue sand card and you have a blue unison card in play, play this card from your hand in rest mode. So now that I've played this card in my hand in rest mode, I now have a blue sand in rest mode, which means that my leader doesn't take damage for at all because I have the Gogeta in play. So this is 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50. And you were at 50? Yep. So normally I would have died here. (laughs) But <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is I could have declared this attack into his unison to clear it to avoid that it was just such a tough call though because if he doesn't play that card which most people in this meta don't and he had another even, negate I didn't, even, I didn't even remember that I had it in my deck man I was like, it's just Goku just found it I was like come on boys come <laughs> but if he had another negate in his hand he was more likely to have that than he would be to have that card. So attacking my leader was the right card. This is this is a ridiculous card, and this is not something one should play around unless they have clear way to clear the unison. Right. So if there wasn't a direct way, like taking out the taking out the leader is the right play when the this isn't on board. This is like this is like a secret rare, like the poking and finding what the defensive things you're going to run into are and you want to swing you want to get you want to bait the defense out with the less oppressive cards yep yep absolutely all right on to round three of me playing a deck that i've been playing for two years versus (laughs) you playing a deck for the first time we're we're gonna try and get there baby let's go (laughs) we almost we're so close (laughs) yeah it was dude i it was that yeah that was i mean that would have been game there if i hadn't seen that (laughs) That was ridiculous. That was completely dumb. <laughs> that was the worst thing. Alright, here we go. Wait. Alright. 
I think I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Ha <laughs> <laughs>